bit earlier. Probably from about three, four, early, very early, really, because uh, she was a good thumb sucker um, and took great comfort from having her finger and her thumb in her mouth, uh, which pushed, uh, pushed it uh, like this, really, all day long yeah. um, as a comfort. And uh, to try and get her to stop doing this was quite difficult. It started bothering me towards the start of senior school, maybe, when I was just very shy. I noticed I've had the problem. Um, no one really made any comments about it, but I was very aware of it. And it wasn't getting any better. I didn't know what to do about it. Well, our dentist put us uh, in touch with the orthodontist at the hospital who, probably around the age of 10, 11, we went up for several consultations and the only option that we were offered was surgery um, to realign her jaw, major surgery, um, and they reckoned between 18 and 21, I think, that they'd want to do that surgery. They didn't give anything apart from when you're 16 you're allowed this operation but it sounded a bit scary that they take the whole jaw out and then move it forward and that didn't seem too appealing no but yeah so they i just went back to school and didn't think there was that many opportunities to get it resolved and then we were very lucky that my mother read the, um, it was either the Weekend Telegraph or the Daily Telegraph and found an article um, really describing um, John Mew's work in Purley as an option, as an alternative to this. So we phoned up and booked like, the consultation and yeah, it all went from there really. It was a big debate whether we were going to go ahead with it because it was a long way. They said it was hard work. We would have to go like every two weeks, and we lived in Preston, so it's a long way. So how far is that? So it's around probably 250 miles. It wasn't too bad on the train. millimetres which in orthodontic terms is severe but I think Nicola was um, expecting that to be told she would need surgery and she'd already been told this and I think was ready to accept it indeed that is how virtually all children in this country um, who have treatment at this age are treated because it's taught within the universities that it's not possible to all to the growth of the jaws, certainly not to that extent. Um, however, in my experience, if you can alter the posture, particularly in a young child, you will find that you can get quite a change in the structure, growth and shape of both the upper and lower jaws, and incidentally, most of the tissues around them. The treatment for Nikki was, uh, it was hard, it was painful um, for the first couple of days after each visit and initially they were fortnightly and we'd be sitting on the train back home um, and she was often quite weepy, quite tearful, quite sort of, you know, sore and, um, but she was determined and, uh, you know, good for her, she stuck at it and she did it. I, I could have not taken the treatment and I could have lived a good life but to me, I weren't happy with the way I looked and it was something that was important to me, I guess. As a girl, you want to be confident and you want to look good in it.
initially we have to correct the physical shape of her upper jaw, which was very narrow, um, because she kept her tongue between her teeth when it should have been in her palate. And um, as a result, um, we initially gave her an appliance to do um, widen her jaw and to move her upper teeth forward, despite the fact that they already looked too far forward. This was to allow us to bring the lower jaw further forward. Um, then at a later stage, we um, start the training to correct her posture, which we do largely with appliances, but also by giving them instructions and encouragement. And then I think it's around seven months later, we changed to another brace, which just went at the top of the mouth, but it had two fangs hanging down, which stopped me from dropping my jaw which was a problem at the time. And that's what caused the, maybe like the deterioration of like the bottom jaw to be so far behind. Mm -hmm. And so that is another painful brace. So I had a lot of ulcers at the bottom of my mouth yeah. that were very, so like every time you drop the jaw, that would just dig into the bottom of the mouth. And that was very painful, but you, it's what you got to go through to learn to keep your mouth together, your tongue up, which has just been drilled into you. Um, and you wore that all day, every day and all day and all night. <laughs> um, apart from eating, you got to take it out. So even if you've got the ulcers, you've still got the brace in your mouth, which is very painful. And I'm thrilled with the results. The results are spectacular and our personality just blossomed and grew and her confidence as her face corrected and realigned. I think it was like the middle of college, so around 17, that I noticed like, you know, this is actually like, like changed your life. I was a lot more confident, like college. I guess you're not with the same people from school. So like they don't know what you look like before. So that helped a lot. And then I, yeah, I came up my shell and then at university that was fine. Like I think no one would ever know that I'd had the, like, the overbite was such a like, massive change. So fortunate that my mother just read this one article about John because um, there's no advice from our dentist, no advice from the hospital. It's all just undercover almost it seems and that uh, uh, I really feel sort of almost that, you know, I lived not far away from Pearlie. I would have loved that treatment as a child. So now I work at school teaching sport. So yeah, and then I used to work in a gym, doing like spinning classes and yeah, just standing up in front of people. I don't think I could have done without the treatment. You do get judged when you've got the overbite or if you're not, there's something wrong, people do, I think, judge you and like, it does happen as much as people say they don't, but it is there. So I don't know what I'd look like now if I hadn't had it or like what sort of person I'd be or if I could do the job I do today with confidence or who knows what I like would be like.